crisis that we uh, open our Bible to the big text of this music, which is in the book of First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter number four. And then uh, I'm just going to read verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter four. Um, if you don't mind, permit me to read verses six and seven. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verses six and seven. I'm going to read it in the old in James Version. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to keep the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in having this that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. May the Lord bless this one in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I am sure that the passage that I just read to you is not in any way strange. However, there are some few things that I would like us to check tonight as I introduce this subject matter. I know the Lord has helped us to pray. I believe that while um, um, the Lord's servant was still enough to pray, some few issues will have been raised that will guide us. And I also think very strongly to that the message the choir brought must have also um, shed little light, sweet not very much light on the matter. On the, on the matter. But I like to see very deliberately because we may be wondering in our hearts what is the treasure that is kept in every person. Even though I am not going to start to talk about that treasure first and foremost, but I needed to read that verse so that we could have uh, an understanding that we are not talking about uh, something that is worthless, something that is without value, and something that is despicable. Now, verse 6 says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. If you remember Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Have you? Yes, there was darkness everywhere before that time. But God commanded light to shine. Now, that God that commanded light to shine, Paul said, has shined in our hearts. That same God who commanded light to shine out of darkness in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. That God has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That seemed a little bit technical. I may not want to touch it now. Because I know I still have some few moments to look at this word together with you in this meeting. But I needed to raise this because of the need for me to say some few things I'm going to say in a short while. That God, who commanded light in the beginning, who said, Let there be light, that God has shined, that God has appeared in our hearts. And he did so for a reason. So that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the light, the understanding of what the glory of God is. And I remember that Moses said, God, show me your glory. 
show me your glory. And as God was going to respond to the request of Moses, I was surprised when God said, no man sees my face and leave. I felt what Moses was asking for was something shiny. I didn't know that what Moses was asking for was to see God. Was to see his face. So God said, what you are looking for is not something that mortal men can see and survive. Now, so Paul said, the Lord God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, that God has suddenly appeared in our heart and appeared so that he may shine a light, a light and understanding, a knowledge that 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 brings the weight of his glory to bear in a man's heart, but that weight of glory, which is his face, which is his personality, is described in the face. And I wish I could use another word for the word face in the in the context of Jesus. Now that may look technical. I am going to break it as the Lord will give us space. Let me say it in a simpler form that God who saw darkness in the beginning and knew that that darkness will not allow anything to survive, will not allow to anybody to see the beauty of the earth, that God commanded light to shine. When light came in the beginning, it became very easy for God to start to bring everything back to shape. It was no longer difficult for God to command water to separate from water, firmament to come, vegetation to come, because light has come. Now, that same God understood when darkness returned. And darkness came again and covered the whole earth. In fact, Isaiah called it gross darkness. Now, because of that darkness, man again lost the shine, the light that God brought forth in the beginning. And God, this time around, wanting to bring that light back, first shine in our hearts so that the knowledge, the understanding of his person come back to us now this time around in the face of Jesus now that being said Paul now said this treasure this glory of God this person of God this image of God is only found in the face of Jesus but as great as that image is, as glorious as that glory is, God has decided to keep it in an earthen vessel. Now that's the challenge we have in this meeting. And so I am going to, I have said all that I've said, I've not started preaching at all. I've said all that I've said because of what I want to say. Does it make sense to you at all? Yes, it's because of statements I want to make now. Great treasures or anything valuable is always kept or in most cases, kept in great treasuries. Many times, great treasuries are not always the only place to find great treasures. I, am, I believe you will not be confused. Now, that's why I came from where I came from. Because I'll be saying things that if I didn't say all that I said, you might be wondering, Raria, what are you talking about actually? 
in my heart. Things that are valuable, things that are precious, things that are very important are always kept in safe and strong places. If you go to where they keep money in the bank, they call it vault. It's not everybody that can access it. Okay? It, they, sometimes they call it strong room because it is strong. The door is made of a terrible steel. If you shoot it, it cannot happen. It won't, happen. It won't, it won't respond to you. Because cash, very important documents, jewelries that are very precious, what you know that you can take to the bank is money. Okay? People keep their jewelry in the bank too. I hope you know that you can take your chain, your earring, your necklace, your bangle to the bank. Okay? People keep the documents of their property in the bank. Okay? Some people keep their share certificates, very critical share certificates in the bank. Once you don't want it to get lost, you keep it in the bank. Now, if fire should burn that bank from the head to the toe, whatever is kept in that strong room is kept. Because it is not only bulletproof, it is also fireproof. Am I making sense to you? Are you sure I'm making sense to you? Now, sometimes they keep things in strong room or in very great um, treasury or vault because they don't want it to be stolen, sometimes because they don't want it to be tampered with, sometimes because they want to use it in a future time, and then they go and keep it there. Sometimes I want to say, the strength of, of, um, of a save. In fact, if you get to some hotels, some hotels um, have save in the room. Not all hotels. If you get to some very beautiful hotels, um, maybe I've seen one or two of such in Nigeria. When I traveled abroad, I saw in my wardrobe a safe and I am the one that knows the number that opens it and, and, and locks it so I could keep my passport I could keep my money inside and nothing will happen to it very intelligent people all right because they know that you come into the hotel with something very valuable and you can't be going everywhere with it and um, what do they call them now? The housekeepers will come to come and clean your room every time. And if you keep something valuable there, it can vanish. All right. So they have saves in the wardrobe where you can keep something valuable. The box looks, the box is almost not bigger than my Bible. But I tried to carry it. I saw that it was a box. Heavy. In fact, I couldn't move it. You can only open it with numbers and lock it with number. And that number is kept with you. Only you, you are the one that devises the number. And when you are going, you can't see it. Somebody else comes in to use another number. Now, not every hotel could afford such save in all the rooms. So you find out that sometimes. The strength, the power, the quality of a save or of a vault reflects the capacity of the owner or the value of what is to be kept. Am I making sense to you? Now, it is not possible 
for somebody to buy three balls of kingbe and go to keep it in the bank. Will you do that? No. Because it is not valuable as it were. You do not want to pay money to the bank for keeping your akara for you. Say, how much is akara? Yet, I realize that life is the same everywhere. Either the person is rich or poor. Life is the same. However, we are men, we are rich men live. It's not the same thing we are poor men live. Am I correct? Yeah. Even though life is the same, if you get to some, to some houses, you just wonder in your heart, who is living here? If you get to some, to some, to some areas in Nigeria, you just wonder in your heart, am I in heaven or on earth? Do you mean that human beings are also living here? Now, and it's the same life. Sometimes if you see how much some rich men spend in keeping their dogs, if you get that money, you will say, I'm no longer poor. Am I making sense to you? Yes. I know, I know puppies that are sold for as much as 1.2 million naira. Yes, in Nigeria here. Just dog. Such dogs, they cannot use such dogs to guard a madman. Even though the life of the madman and the life of this rich man before God are the same. So sometimes the treasury or the vault or the safe where something is kept could be a reflection of the owner of what is kept. Am I making sense to you? So when you approach a house and you see heavy, heavy guards and some terrible looking dogs, suddenly without anybody telling you, you know that a rich man is where? He's living here. You feel that the life inside that building is precious. That's why it's heavily guarded. Are you following me? Yes, Good. It is strange. And I will just drop it as a hint. When we push this meeting forward, I'll be dealing with the details. It is strange that God trusts the earth so much that what appeared to be precious to him, he keeps in the earth. And I don't know why. I will give you a few examples of things I have found. Number one, I'm going to query God, though, not that I want to challenge him. I want to, you see, because I love to ask questions. When I read the Bible, I ask, as we are coming, I was coming meditating, I was trying to write, you know, about this meeting. I was just curious in my mind. As we are coming, I was just writing. Issues were coming in my heart. And I was trying to type them on my phone. Because there are issues about this subject that seem close to me. And I'm pressing God to open it. Now, I want you to, to see. When God wanted to make man. He said, let us make man. Let means permit. You may never have seen that in the heavens. Anything that looks like God. You may have wondered, can, can God share his image with anything? 
But can I seek the permission of the council of heaven that we should make man in our image after our likeness? And I feel the council of heaven said, approved. And so I was expecting that what and where God will use as a vault, as a save, as a container, as a vessel to keep his image must reflect his personality. A rich man wanting to keep his jewelry. Will he go and buy the colo we sell in the market made of clay? If you see colo, you know colo? The one that, the traditional colo that we call bank. When you see it, you can, you can imagine how much will be there. Eh? Coins. You will never have thought that if you break that colo, you will find dollars there. Because he who can afford dollars will not use that kind of colo. Am I making sense to you? Now, I told you that I want to query God. Not that I want to query him as though he has done something wrong. I feel like asking why. Why do you do that? Why do you think dust is the safe place to keep your image? Knowing full well that Lucifer will come after it. Knowing full well that the devil will be interested in destroying it. That which you saw permission, it was not God's personal decision. I want you to take note. Let us means permit us. Allow us. If God will have to appeal to the council of heaven to do something, I think, excuse me, if you beg somebody and you beg and you beg and you beg before he gives you his car to take from here to Wode, Excuse me, how will you use that car? You'll be very careful. Say, ah, if you see how much I beg this brother, I beg, I beg, so that next time, he will not say, no, you want to use that car. If somebody is doing, say, eh, 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 motor In fact, if you know what my eyes saw, Toba Montogu Miri, before I could secure the release of this car, you will not tamper with it. Now, I am thinking in my mind that what God went through to secure, when we read it, it looks simple. Okay? It looks simple. Many, many years ago, I got a job. I just left school. And it was my mom who went to go and went to feed meal to go and do the, the feed for her chicken and met a pastor there. They got talking and told the pastor, my son needs a job. And I said, look, um, no problem. Let him see me and all that. And so I was invited for the interview and we sat down. We prayed all night. We sat down in the, in the reception. And after a long while, one elderly man came out and said, we should all write our names. And we wrote it. And then I said, we'll call you back. I felt so bad. I came from a vigil for this interview. And you just make up to sit down for hours only to say we should write our name and come back. I went home disappointed. I didn't know. When, few days after, I received a letter that I should come and start work. I said, which work? We work that I didn't do interview. I didn't know that somebody was working underneath for me. I didn't know. I didn't know that the pastor that my mother met has a GM in that office 
spoke to the GM, and the GM spoke to the executive director. And they just gave me express, express inroad into the place. So me, Mumu, I didn't know anything. So I began to work there. And it was not long when the union found out that there is something in this young man. And so I was made the secretary of the union. And I was problem in the office. And the union said, look, we are going to strike and all of that. And maybe God just helped me. I have this, this way of writing. And I wrote to the management. So eventually they listened to us. It was almost going to become rowdy. So the GM now invited me to his office. That was the day I heard the story. Oh, God. I felt so bad. He said, he used to call me Sukomi. He said, Sukomi, the union were planning to go on strike, and you did not tell me. I said, sir, it's a position of trust. <laughs> Foolish boy. <yo. laughs> and I was, I was being frank. I said, it's a position of trust. He said, your mom told my pastor about you. It was my pastor who recommended you. He said, you know the executive director. That one, because at that point in time, we have problem with Cooperative Bank. So Cooperative Bank sent his staff, their staff to be the executive director to oversee our company. So he seemed to be ahead of the GM. Now, and the person that was sent was a young man, maybe about 31 years then. He said, I went to the office of the ED and I bent like this before him that he should allow you to come in. I will never forget that encounter. I appealed to him. He told me, and I learned that lesson from him. He said, you should have called me and tell me. Say, writing is the last thing that any man should do. Because what you write is kept. <laughs> I learned that lesson many, many years ago now. I'm telling you of what happened in 1988. They are about 1988. No, 1986. 86, 87. Now, but you see, since from the day he spoke to me like that, you know, I treated him with utmost respect. I treasure him in my heart. I didn't know that story. And if he didn't tell me, I would not have known. But since I knew that story, my approach to life changed. My way of looking at him changed. He earned my respects and we were friends till I left the place. Now, I want to say to you that I am also thinking that if God went as far, permit me, as far as begging the counsel of heaven to obtain approval to keep his image somewhere, I felt that God will not think of doing it again. He should keep it in a place that is safe. He should keep it in a place that is strong. I told myself, valuables are not kept in breakables. But I don't know. That image, God decided to keep it not in a house of iron, not in a house of bronze, not in a house of stone, but in a house of what? In a house of clay. 
Is it wise? Eh? I know you are free because it concerns God. Say, who am I, who am I to say that decision is not wise? I also ask God to say, is that wise? But then, I know you are wise. So for you to have done that, there must be something you want to bring out. Now, I also realize that raw gold, precious metals, gems, precious stones, and natural resources that are valuable are kept beneath the earth. Inside death. So I felt that God delight so much in the earth and the earth seemed to be his trusted bank where he keeps his things. Am I making sense to you? Are you sure I'm making sense? All right. I'm not going to delay you because you have waited for a long time. All I'm going to do tonight is just to introduce. But I don't want to introduce it without striking an understanding in your heart to bring about a heart of appreciation that God looked at you and didn't think you are too weak to have this treasure in you. He didn't think that you and I are too vulnerable and too, what English do I use now? Eh? Too what? Feeble, porous, for him to keep what is valuable to him inside of us. Before I close tonight, one of the wonders that I found about God in the way he handles things is even when Christ was to be born. There was a seed that he talked about as early as Genesis chapter 3. I hope you remember. On that seed hung the hope of the whole world. Yoruba says, a man with a single life call does not travel beside a river. Ologunaka. You know why? If that life could force off his hand suddenly and he rose inside the river, that's all. So he will go and walk far away from the river so that even if he falls, he can pick his thing again and get going. Now, just a seed. And Paul said he's not talking about seeds. He talks about seed, one. Now, I am thinking that if God is going to deposit that seed in a womb, he should look for an experienced woman who had carried it many times successfully. It shouldn't be a greenhorn an inexperienced person like Mary that he should trust with such a precious seed. But God shocked me again that he went for a woman who told the angel, I know not. Now he said, I know not a man, but I decided to stop at I know not. As if to say, I am a fool. I don't know anything. Why do you consider me for such a project? 
Why don't you go to people who know? Men and women of experience. This one was not married. He had not given birth to a child. He had never raised a child before. How do you trust this precious seed with such a green horn? But God was going to shock everybody. He said, that's the one I want to use. So I keep asking, why? Paul writing to the brethren in Corinth said, do you see how you are saved? That it was not after the way people consider it. You don't even stand a chance at all. Why should God, a man like me, I don't know you, so you might be very qualified for God to come to you. There are people, there are people on earth, in our environment, that if you greet them, they will not greet you back because they consider you too small to greet them. Have you met people like that before? Yes. They think it's an insult for them to respond to your greetings because you are just too small. There are men that you cannot enter into their vehicles because you are just too dirty to enter into their vehicles. Even though that vehicle is also pangolo, but you are too dirty to enter. Am I making sense to you? Now, I wish your understanding therefore will open to now think if ordinary human being whose breath is in his nostrils we consider you too low to be greeted. Why should God come to tabernacle with you? Think about it. As we are going to pray tonight, I want to look at that verse 7 again, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to speak. I will just read it and raise the final question or point your attention to what Paul said in verse 7, and we're going to close tonight. Because I see women here that will still go home and cook. And children that must report back to their parents so that they will not say, your church, I don't know what they are doing there. What are you doing till late in the night? You will not go tomorrow. We want you to come back tomorrow. Is that all right? Okay. Verse 7 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 7. But we have. Can you please say, we have. We have. Can, I, can I hear you say it loudly, please? We have. We have. All right, can you say, I have? I have. Now, this is not a hope. This is not something far. We have. It's a possession. I will talk about it, but not tonight. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. And all I have said since I began is to talk about the issue of earth, earthing. Why should God think that that is a, a strong room? Breakable plates, breakable pots, breakable bank. God has decided to go and keep. If you have, if you have ten thousand dollars in your hand. And then you go and keep it inside the bank made by carpenter. Do you know that bank? Is is an upgrade of the clay bank. Ten thousand dollars inside a wooden box. Two of you show half inch you come. And then you are crying that they stole your money. And they ask you, where do you keep it? He said, inside this box. They will look at you and say, if not that I'm a Christian, I will have said something to you. <laughs> That's what you are going to say. 
You look at it and say, you are not serious. How can you keep such amount of money? Even to keep it at home is not safe. Than to keep it in an unsafe safe. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. He doesn't. Now, Paul has to unravel the mystery behind God choosing acting vessel as his own vault, as his own strong room to keep the treasure. We have not talked so much about the treasure. I only talk about treasure at the beginning just to let you know that what we are talking about is not something despicable. It's something valuable. Now, he said, God has done that so that the excellency of the power. Now, there is a power to the power of the excellency and the power that excels. There are two things. When you see a governor in Nigeria, they are greeted, your excellency. As if to say, they don't have errors. You are excellent. Even though we know they are not. I was, I was just lamenting this morning when they said they have introduced SWAT, okay? People are saying answers. You say you are introducing SWAT. It doesn't make sense. For me, it doesn't make sense. Either it is SWAT or what or monopoly. It's not, this is not the time to introduce anything. This is the time to listen to those who are agitated and, and first meet their needs. And I don't think they are asking for anything too much. It's terrible. God will answer our prayer over Nigeria. Yeah. He will give us a new Nigeria. Yeah. We have spoken about it. We have prayed about it. We have prophesied about it. It shall come to pass. Yeah. What? I was telling my brethren, when I was in primary school, we were coming from school one day in 1970. 1771. And a major market in Ibano called Okiado, a car ran over a small girl and killed her. The government responded. And they did a tunnel. Abele. They constructed a bridge on an existing road underneath. You will descend into the bridge you will come out on the other side just because a small child was killed in this same Nigeria. And these are military governors. I was a witness. I started driving very early, as early as 77, on this Lagos Ibano Expressway. There were cameras on that road. If you go beyond 100 kilometers per hour, you'll be arrested. Because camera will have picked your speed, your speed and then they stop you. 1977. There were no computers then. There was no internet then. And that was Nigeria that I saw. Are we going forward or going backward? We are not afraid to speak to the government. When God sends us, we will declare it. But you see, I am simply saying to you tonight that God has decided to keep this treasure in earthen vessel, number one, that... The power of his excellency, the one that makes and has no fault, and the power that excels, the power that goes beyond all the powers that you can think about, might be of him and not of us. 
I will talk about it, but not tonight. So, there was a reason. There was a reason for which God made Samson to wear dreadlocks and is looking like a white animal. There was a reason God told him, don't drink wine. Now, a man that is looking like a madman because he never visited a barbing saloon for 30 years. And then he does something great. So how can an ugly man do this great thing? It couldn't have been him. It must have been somebody behind him. How can a wired looking man like this pick a lion and tear it? How can a wired looking man like this take a jawbone of an ass and destroy 1,000 soldiers, not civilians? No! This cannot be the power of drink because he doesn't drink. This cannot be the power or influence of drugs because he doesn't eat anything unclean. This must be the power of an unseen God. When you are too beautiful, the beauty of God is not seen. When you are too intelligent, God does not want to use such a man because men will not appreciate the intelligence of God. When you are too certificated, God is not interested because your certificate will not allow God to shine. He looks for men simple, he look for men common to do uncommon things through their lives. Rise to your feet. Let's pray. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, not in golden vessels, not in silver vessels. Gems, precious metals are kept in the earth. No. Not in something serious. Only men keep their own treasure in bogus big things. God keeps his in simple things. Only men who are empty goes around with bodyguards. Those who carry God they go with invisible, innumerable numbers of the angels. It is emptiness that makes you to shout. When there is treasure inside, you'll be quiet. I want you to talk to the Lord. I ask him, why, why many times as I was coming? Why, why did you do this? What's the sense in this? What's the wisdom in this? I prayed. I said, Lord, what's the meaning of this? Why have you decided to choose a thin, a thin bank? Clay, breakable. Breakable. Break, it must not fall. It, it scatters. Is that wise? Paul said, that's the excellency of the power may be of him and not of us. If you see a man who boasts, then that excellency of power is not in him. I want you to talk to the Lord tonight. I believe in my heart that even if I have stammered these few minutes, this one hour, my stammering should have brought something to your heart for you to pray about. So I want to first, on your own, respond to God. I don't know what, but I will tell you, every man, every man will be accountable to the graces and the gifts God has kept in him. I will tell you, I, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow or Saturday, somewhere, 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 somehow, a point will get there. I'll be talking about it. I want you to first respond. 
I don't know whether you want to respond in praise and say, God, have you done this much for me? Or you want to respond in repentance and say, Lord, I didn't know you traveled that far to do this and yet I never treasure what you have given to me. Your life is not yours. God begged the council of heaven to secure that life for you. He begged, let us. It was a begging. It was an appeal for you to be God begged. It's not possible for you to start living that life without understanding that a whole God had to beg for you to be. You are living in sin as if you are just yourself and you are on your own. You don't understand that God begged. That man told me, Sukumi, I begged. I did like this. I bow for a young man just to have you here. Why won't I respect such? Why won't I value such a man? Why won't I thank him and appreciate him for such a blessing trusted into my hands? You know I want to ask you. I believe there are some of you here tonight you are just living your life carelessly. You are just throwing yourself here and there. You, you seem not to understand what it costs God to have you stay alive. You are walking in sin and you don't understand the wrath that will follow what you are doing. And tonight, you want to run to the Savior. You want to ask him to save you. Can I request... That you come to the altar here. And come and drop your life back into his hand. And say, Lord, I have thoroughly misbehaved. I have, I have actually abused my life. I didn't give it the value you gave it. I am sorry about it. I repent tonight. I won't throw my life anyhow anymore. I won't give my life to drugs anymore. I won't give my body to fornication anymore. I won't give my body to alcoholic beverages anymore. I want to start a new life. If you are in that category, I ask you to report right at the altar here. And I will be praying together with you. But you respond. I wish I could push you to pray. I wish I could lead you to pray tonight. But if God has spoken to you, and you have realized something, will you please respond to the Lord in prayer? Holy Spirit, will you please speak our hearts towards understanding of what you are saying to us? Can you prick our consciences as well? Can you prick our thoughts as well? And bring us to understand what, what treasure you have decided to keep in earthen breakable vessels. Lord, at this treasure, you could have kept in the angels, but you chose breakable vessels. Lord, I am appealing to you that my heart you are going to help so that I may understand what you have done for me. I am living carelessly I seem not to understand what you have brought into my hand. I seem not to understand that valuables are not kept in breakables. But you have chosen to keep valuables in a breakable vessel. Awesome God, I stand a debtor unto you for the rest of my life. I stand a debtor of your mercy. A debtor of your grace. A debtor of your magnanimity. A debtor of the largeness of your heart. A debtor of your kindness. Loving kindness for that matter.
thank you for choosing to keep this treasure and for me to have it. I have it. It is my own, but yet not my own. I have it in my possession so that the excelling power may be yours and I have nothing to boast about. Would you like to bring this prayer point to a close? Time is not there, so I may not be able to lead another prayer except if the Lord leads my brother to lead it. Bring this prayer point to a close. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Eternal Father, we may not be able to thank you enough tonight and in fact throughout our lifetime if we really understand what you have done by making this treasure to be in an earthen vessel. Lord, we are grateful for the way you have spoken to us this opening night. And Lord, we are very, very grateful that you chose to speak to us this way. Please receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, our request tonight is that in your mercy, you will open further our understanding that we may treasure this treasure and we may also be careful of this vessel. Knowing full well that this vessel is breakable and so we cannot afford the treasure. Number two, because this vessel is breakable, we must be very careful the way we conduct our lives. Father, I plead with you that in the course of this meeting, you will open further our understanding. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.